What up nomads? In this video, I'm doing a deep dive into one outfit every avid traveler thinks about at some point, the airport look. Let's go. Your travel day outfit can be guided by so many factors, from comfort on a long plane ride to the items that didn't quite fit into your suitcase and can even be influenced by where you're going straight after you land. I'll be going through all the elements to think about, share some inspiration, and walk you through how I make decisions on my airplane outfit. Number one, how long is your flight? First off, the biggest influence on how I approach my travel day outfit is the length of the flight. Under three hours? I don't really view it that differently from sitting at my desk on a normal work day. If I can do that in tight jeans, I can probably do a plane ride in tight jeans too. Longer than that, and I really do take into consideration my comfort and my tolerance for tight clothes. The longer the flight, the looser the clothes. The second factor for me is where I'm going when I land. If I'm sleepily hopping into a cab and going straight home, I do not care about vanity quite as much and I can pretty much wear whatever I feel like. But if I'm being picked up by a work colleague and taken to a meeting directly, then things are different. I also take into consideration the weather upon landing. If it's rainy, I do like to have my raincoat on me ready to go. Or if I'm landing during the daytime, having sunglasses readily available is also great. It might be weird to pack sunglasses at night if you're taking a red eye, so I would recommend something that packs small. These foldable sunglasses from Wave Eyewear are great to have, and I can easily pop them on at my destination. The other element I consider is if I'm taking public transportation after I land. I may not want to be in socks and sandals or sweatpants if I'm hopping onto the London Tube, the San Francisco BART, or a shuttle bus to downtown wherever. I will want to have a look that's half decent for life outside the bubble that is airport life. Number three is to really think about whether you want to maximize your airplane outfit for adaptability and mixing and matching, or to specialize, meaning to really pick an outfit that's just for your travel dates. Are you expecting to use these items for other outfits? Are you planning on changing on the plane? So I've talked a lot about feeling appropriately dressed for when you land, and you're probably asking yourself, well, can I just change either on the plane or when I land at the airport? And the answer is absolutely yes. I did this recently on a red eye, and it's a great option. Really, there are a few factors to consider when planning an outfit switch for a flight. Are you trying to maximize the items you've packed, or are you okay having a dedicated plane outfit? For example, if you're traveling with one carry-on for three weeks, your plane outfit should be items you plan to wear in other combinations throughout the trip. Otherwise, it can be a bit of a waste of space to have an outfit you'll only wear once on your trip. But if space is not a concern, then you can absolutely wear a sweatsuit and have it be your dedicated plane outfit. The second factor is room in your personal item. My personal item was pretty full on my last red eye. I had my laptop, headphones, water bottle, chargers, and travel pillow. So I actually went to the airport in my plane outfit, but packed what I would change into upon landing. I brought these nylon cargos, a fresh pair of underwear and a tank top, and these folded up into a super small space in my bag. You can also go the route of wearing something nice to the airport, changing into something more comfortable on the plane, like easy to pack leggings, and changing back. It's up to you. In general though, I would recommend making sure your plane outfit also lends itself to the rest of your packing capsule for optimal mixing and matching. The other element that has a huge impact on my plane outfit on short or long flights is what are my bulkiest items? If it's boots, a coat, a chunky sweater, chances are I'll wear those on the plane so I have as much room in my suitcase as possible. Admittedly, that does make for some strange combinations at times, but you do what you must. Number five is to consider your personal wellness. Do you run hot or cold? Do you have any specific medical needs? Really, this tip should be at the top. One major category of concern to consider for a plane outfit is any medical or special needs. 
Do you have an ostomy bag? Are you breastfeeding? Did you just have surgery and some clothes rub your fresh scar in a painful way? Also, your own personal comfort, like if you run hot, are having hot flashes, or if you're often cold and have poor circulation. Knowing yourself and your personal comfort level is key here. I also always recommend compression socks for everyone and have a whole video on why compression socks are great for plane rides and how to pick the best ones. Number six. All right, let's get into some practical suggestions for plane outfits, starting with bottoms. Shorts and short skirts are not my favorite. I have worn shorts before on a 45 minute flight from Vancouver to Victoria in the summer and it was fine. But planes are typically cold and going back to the bulkiness tip before, I just feel like it's a wasted chance to wear something that's taking up a bit more space in my suitcase. I have however worn a long skirt before. Well, it was a dress to be more specific and it was awesome. I was comfortable, I was warm, 10 out of 10 would do again. Now jeans. Okay, jeans are also fine, but personally I wear my loose jeans or the ones with a bit more ease in the waistband and the legs. I would avoid white jeans, although I've done it before, but just think about the risk of getting them dirty and for me the risk is too high. Trousers are probably my favorite thing to wear on the plane. I like viscose, loose ones, or in the winter a wool blend one especially if I'm going straight to a meeting. Then a merino blend trouser is awesome. I've also worn silk loose pants, which are extremely comfortable, but since silk does pack super flat, you might want to consider if they are best swapped for something bulkier in your suitcase. Same goes for those super trendy pleated pants. If you're not short on space and you don't need to wear your bulkiest item on the plane, then these are great. And there's a whole category of knit sweater pants that I also love. In my opinion, the worst pants I could think of to wear are super tight and rigid denim and leather pants, would not recommend. Sweatpants. Yes, I've been there, recently actually. I wore these track pants on my last red eye and loved them. They were comfortable, but also didn't scream dirtbag like a pair of old gray sweatpants might. There is such a range of pants in this category too. You can get trousers in sweatpant fabric, but that look really nice, are made in smart clean lines, and to the untrained eye, could pass for work trousers. Leggings. Would I wear leggings as pants? Yeah, sure. One thing I do though is make sure my rear is covered. Even when I was at my fittest, I didn't love having my butt out, so I'd recommend pairing it with a long sweatshirt, a maxi cardigan, or a long coat. Leggings are however a great option to have as something you're changing into on the flight because they pack so small, therefore they're easy to throw into your personal bag and change into on the plane. This video is sponsored by the Hydragun Atom, a super cute yet super powerful travel size massage gun that's perfect for all travelers. I go through seasons of being on top of my fitness and some where I'm not. And if you're like me, you know that that first workout after a break it hurts. So that's when a massage gun like this does wonders to sore muscles. But it's also great to massage your body after a long flight and to help increase circulation. And it's not just for travelers. If you live in a small apartment like I do, this is actually a preferred size so that you don't have to have a lot of bulky equipment. The Hydragun Atom is just 1.77 inches. Its motor runs up to 3,200 powerful percussions per minute. It weighs just over 1.1 pounds, but produces up to 15.4 pounds of force. The ultra long battery life lasts up to five hours and is double the industry standard. So it's good for about 30 uses per charge. It comes with a charger, cable, three attachment heads, and a cloth, all in a super cute carrying case. The Canadian release of this ultra portable massage gun is October 14, 2022, and viewers who use the code Capsule Suitcase at the checkout will get $25 Canadian dollars off their purchase of the Atom. This discount code is available for a limited time and will only last until December 31st, 2022. Follow the link in the description to find out more. Now shoes. Shoes for me are mostly informed by what can fit in my suitcase and which shoes are the bulkiest. So on most trips, I'm wearing the sneakers or biggest boots I'm packing. 
So these are what you'll find me in most often. But I've also worn Birkenstock sandals and socks. Yes, I did it. Because those happened to be the bulkiest shoes I was packing for that summer trip. But generally, I don't wear sandals on travel days because I don't like my feet being exposed like that. If you have to take off your shoes for security, I would hate walking barefoot, even for just a minute. Same goes for slides. Would wear slides with socks like the Birkenstock Bostons, but not barefoot, at least not until after I've gone through security. If space were no concern, sure, I'd consider wearing little shearling booties, but really, it goes back to wearing the biggest shoes I've selected for my travel capsule. The ones that are complicated to remove and that have lots of buckles and laces can be a pain in the butt if you're going through security, but that's the price you pay to wear the bulkiest shoes on travel day. You might consider choosing boots that slide off or have a side zipper if that's a concern. What about heels? Well, I've done a low heel before without issues, but it's not my favorite and I would avoid. I know it looks so cool on celebrities who look super chic coming off the plane, but my reality is I'm often running to my next connecting flight and would just look silly or twist an ankle if I was trying to do that in heels. The coat. This is my favorite part of a travel outfit because it's like a safety net, a security blanket, and an instant outfit changer. Going back to celebrity inspiration, the common denominator is so often a great coat. You can wear anything underneath and a chic coat will cover all ills. The other way to look at coats and jackets is to pick the ones that may get damaged in your suitcase. So rather than packing a leather coat, you wear it. So leather coats, blazers, these can be hard to pack and really would be best cared for by being worn on travel days. Once again, bulkiness is also a factor to consider. When I travel in the winter, I usually pack one wool coat and one puffer. And between the two, the puffer can squeeze down into a small space, so it's the one I'm gonna put in my suitcase. In the summer, that typically translates to a denim jacket, a big sweatshirt, or a sweater. Whatever is my warmest, biggest item is what I'll wear on the plane. Now let's talk about accessories. Your suitcase and personal item bag are totally part of your airport look. But to select those, I'd recommend checking out my video about choosing your travel bags. Still, you can toss in a small purse to your travel outfit, which I call my extra personal item. I keep my phone, passport, and small essentials in there, especially if my coat has open pockets where things can easily fall out. I don't usually get any flack for this as long as the purse is small and lays flat across my body. I also like a big scarf in the winter, but one warning is to not have too many items to keep track of when traveling. It's so easy to lose a hat, your gloves, and other items when putting your coat in the overhead bin, or even if you have them with you in your seat. In the summertime, I have seen a lot of people travel with their straw hats as part of their travel outfit. And if you've watched my video on how to pack a hat, you know that for the big ones that can easily get crushed, the best way to transport them is really just to wear them. I would recommend minimizing metal accessories like belts and things with lots of zippers, because these can slow you down at security. My final tip is really choosing your plane outfit comes down to two factors. What will be most comfortable for you and really what maximizes your suitcase space. Leave a comment below and tell me what your go-to travel day outfit is. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.